Um, we've been really vocal just personally uh, in our own personal lives as well as professionally through FOH about our own struggles and our own journey in this world and learning how to have better balance and have better wellness and just kind of been very open about our journey of like learning to live happier, better lives. And so through that, when uh, you and Jesse reached out about the blend and there was, we had a conversation that was like, you can really teach about whatever you want. And LP and I both sat down and we were like, what are we qualified to teach about? Like what are, what's valuable to talk about? And she and I both agreed that the thing that we wanted to talk about that is the thing we're the most passionate about is this idea of like working to find some kind of work-life balance because we're both incredibly passionate people. We both are very dedicated to our industry and to our jobs, but we all, we both have had our own journey of realizing that that can't be like the only thing that you live for. Um, so that really is kind of what, what started this idea for our modules for the blend and something that I've personally been really passionate about over the last year or so having, you know, been so dedicated to my career over the last however many years and just all of a sudden like woke up one day and was like, oh my God, do I have any other interests? Like, what else do I like to do? Um, who am I? Who am I it's outside of work? And that has been a huge focus for me over the last year is just like rediscovering who I am and right, being able to recognize that like my, like my career success doesn't quantify like my value as a person necessarily and everything in between. I'll be all at you. Go. Uh, I think that this quarantine has taught me how to use the mute and unmute button because clearly I'm struggling. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, focus on health was, uh, you know, a concept that uh, Alex developed the foundation for and I really was going through my wellness journey over the last few years and around the time I saw that she was starting to post about it you know just kind of took a leap of faith and was like you know I know Alex pretty well rather well we used to work together and uh, I wonder if she'd be interested in you know joining forces and doing this together because I truly do believe that you know two is better than one and and why start something when somebody else is already doing um, something when we can collectively work towards it? So, um, you know, after chatting with her, and I apologize, my dog has a ball in the back. So if you hear him, he's having the time of his life. <laughs> uh, you know, why, why don't we just do this together? And um, what our idea was for Focus on Health originally and what it's transformed into, uh, and I, I know I think I can speak for Alex when I say this, is like, completely amazing and you know what we've seen is we'll occasionally get messages from people like you know thank you for that and you know that was so powerful or you know thank you for sharing your stories and there's great value in that and I I think a part of the reason why I never really felt inclined to start a business or you know do something like this was because I was so caught up in the numbers right like how many followers do you have? How many people are engaging in your content? And those moments where people were like, this is powerful, this is empowering, thank you, made none of that matter. And at the end of the day, what I realized is if we are working towards something that we're passionate about, something that's making a difference, something that's providing people with a voice and an opportunity, then that really is all that matters at the end of the day. I love that. I love, you, you said something that I think is so important that oftentimes we miss as you know you you saw something that you were both talking about and collectively decided to tackle it together and i think if we did more of that where we see you know an issue or or something that multiple people are talking about if you bring those voices into a chorus it's so much more powerful than individuals kind of yelling the same thing at each other from from different points so i love that and i'm so happy that you all found each other because the information that you're sharing and your journeys are so important. We have some questions and they're very good questions. So first question, how have you implemented saying no into your practice of managing your time? Pushing back against our systemic grind culture can be hard and even more challenging as a woman. Alex, do you want me to go first or would you like to go first? Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, it, it, that question is, uh, first of all, a great question, but it actually looks very different for Alex and myself. For me, you know, being a black woman, um, 
Black Lives Matter movement has slowly, you know, been picking up. And I really had to look within myself um, as someone who's not officially employed by anyone um, and say, you know, there are so many opportunities coming to me. What are the ones that align with my values, my morals, my goals, right? What are the ones that are going to provide other people with an opportunity and a platform and a voice? Um, And the first moment, And I think my career where I was like in a position where I could say no was realizing that I don't have to say yes to every opportunity that comes my way. Um, And that being more intentional in the the things that I said yes to um, really allowed me to be a little bit more authentic with my voice and who I am. Um, We often get trapped in this grind culture, as you said, where it's like, wow, I see all these amazing people doing this thing. I need to do that because I'm competing with them where actually that's, that's, that's not what we should be doing. We should be clapping and applauding the folks that are doing what they are doing and not comparing our work to theirs, but rather taking a step back and realizing collectively how all of our work and our efforts are making a difference. Um, so for me, that's really the moment where I was like, wow, I, I can say no, this feels great. My schedule is not over jammed and over packed. Um, and I feel a little bit more fulfilled because I'm doing things that I actually want to do. That was so well said, LP. Um, for me personally, you know, the concept of saying no is something I'm still learning, but I'm getting better at and I'm kind of like relishing it in some ways. Um, a friend of mine gave me some advice the other day when I was trying to decide if I wanted to say yes to an opportunity that I knew deep down was not the right thing for me to do, um, but I was struggling with saying no. And she said, not every great opportunity is your great opportunity. And that like really struck me like to my core, I wish somebody had told me that like seven years ago, uh, honestly. Um, For me, like learning to say no, for me is a lot more driven towards like my work than it is saying no to like opportunities, if that makes sense, like like not directly related to my like my day-to-day job. Um, But learning to say no in like, if somebody like is requesting a meeting on my day off, like for years, I would just say yes. And I would just go in for that meeting. And then it would be like two weeks later. And I'd be like, I've gone to work every day for 14 days. Even if it's like, even if you only go for one meeting, that's like one hour long, all of a sudden you've gone 14, 21 days and you've gone to work every single day. And I think this is so important now that so many people are working from home and you don't have any separation at all between your home life and your work life. You have to learn how to say no, how to turn things off. And I think that this is really ingrained in food and beverage culture because we're like constantly looking to like, you know, say, say yes to everything. And it's part of like hospitality and running businesses like restaurants is a 24 seven job. And so it's really like, we've been kind of like taught to like almost feel bad for taking time off, even if it's like, the days in the week that you are supposed to take days off because like you can't work every day of the week. Um, So yeah, for me, like learning that like, it's okay to be out of reach on your day off. Like, like after this, I'm going on a motorcycle ride up into the mountains, I will be unavailable for the next day. Like, tell your coworkers that you won't be available. It's your day off. And then just like, go like, it's okay. Um, So that's kind of for me a big part of saying no. Awesome. Thanks. I love hearing, especially from the perspective, and this is obviously why Focus on Health is is an amazing organization and why we love to have you guys speaking, especially for the blend, is to hear the perspective from the hospitality industry, right? You're bringing that lens onto everything and there's a huge conversation always going on about wellness, but having that perspective with the hospitality lens is obviously so important. So I'm going to move into one another question for you ladies. Um, what kind of steps did you take to find other interests? Um, was there a lot of trial and error there? Yeah, so for me, um, and I, I said this a little bit in the video, as when quarantine started, I was in my couch, on my bed, with my bag and bowl of chips, watching TV every day. And you know, one day my boyfriend came up to me like, hey, 
you doing okay? Like, what's going on? And I was like, yeah, I'm not great. Then I was like, nah, I guess I'm not. Like, what am I doing? I was so driven. I went from working, you know, every day, working out, doing great to just slumping on the couch. And mind you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. There, there needs to be balance. Um, but uh, that really sparked like a, well, what are, uh, kind of what Alex is saying, what are, what are my interests outside of um, working? What are the things that um, challenge my mind? So uh, there are a few things that I started doing. Um, you know, I started gardening and um, the only thing that survived was mint and that's okay. Mint's a weed, you know, that's cool. So making a lot of mojitos at home. <laughs> um, so that didn't work, but you know, I turned to different um, types of physical uh, workouts. So I was doing P90X for a while. Um, turned to yoga, which is not something I ever thought I'd be doing, but it's great. Uh, my boyfriend built a, an entire barbell rack outside. So, you know, we, we lift weights, but, you know, just keeping it um, fun and different and engaging. Um, I'm reading a lot more and I love that because I used to love to read all the time. So I'm reading um, books about reasoning, about language and how they affect us um, as hospitality individuals. Having an understanding of the two is so essential and important for what we do every day. Um, and I talk about that in, in a module I did Four Tales of the Cocktail with tipping for equity. So definitely check that out. Additionally, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of issues, again, with Black Lives Matter. So reading about um, communities and how they're imp how important they are and, and, um, and, and just the issues that I only have one perspective, right? But the issues that um, they deal with uh, in, in their entirety and um, listening to NPR and the news, which is like such, I, it feels silly saying that, but I wasn't doing that before. I was really depending on Instagram and Facebook to provide me with my news, which is awful. Um, so, you know, I think I, this time has really allowed me to prioritize things that are important that are essential for me, because it's different for everyone. And, um, you know, uh, uh, still eating chips and watching Netflix every once in a while, but there's a lot more balance. LP really nailed that. I think we have like a ton of questions coming in. So I'm going to, I'll let y'all take another one. Awesome. Um, there are uh, several questions in the Q&A, but there is one in the chat that I don't want to lose track of. So I'm going to cover that one really quickly um, from Lisi. Hi, Lisi. I'll miss you. Um, now that many of us are out of work, the scales have shifted from work-life balance to just life balance. This tends to leave us all a bit untethered and longing for work, the work element of life. I'm concerned that the reintegration of work into my life may be quite jarring. Girl, preach. Uh, do y'all have ideas for how the industry can move forward as a whole to transition hospitality workers back into the grind? It is really jarring to go back to work. Um, you know, LP and I've talked a lot about like, you know, she had some consulting jobs and it was like, you know, day two back on the job and you're like driving in eating fast food and you're like, what am I doing? Like, I was so good. Um, but it's been really hard, you know, like the first couple of weeks back into work, I was really good packing my lunch every day, not like relying on, you know, chef to put up a bowl of French fries in the middle of shift that I could like get some, you know, sustenance, um, you know, trying to work out better. It's been really hard to keep a good routine. Um, I think that one of the most important things for people in the industry that are going to be transitioning back into work over the next few months or have maybe just started um, is like learning to be gentle and kind with yourself and, and forgiving and know that this is a really hard thing to go through um, and not be so um, so hard on yourself when you falter, um, you know, maybe that you are like in a really great rhythm and now you're back at work and everything's gonna change. Um, you know, I think that this is also a really important time for us when we go back to work to reevaluate what our values are and what is important to us. We've had like an opportunity to really kind of sit with ourselves. And I think for probably a lot of us, definitely for me, you kind of realize like what works for me and what doesn't work for me anymore. You know, like. I don't know if working until 4.30 in the morning works for me anymore. Um, that might change a lot of things about my career moving forward. And that's just something that I need to keep in mind. I've been journaling a lot since going back to work. I think that that's been really helping me kind of like process a lot of emotions that I've been feeling in a wide variety um, of sectors of my life. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it is a bit jarring to go back. Um, I don't know if I have a lot of great advice, but those are just some of the things that I've kind of been paying attention to. Awesome. I think um, coupling on that, we have another great question that kind of leads in from what you were just talking about, Alex. Um, how do you approach the subject of burnout with your team without sending red alerts and getting them to support you without stigma? Oh, man. Um, I think that it starts with setting a culture in your team of like open dialogue, um, honest and empathetic communication um, so that, you know, you can be honest with your team when you're feeling burnout and then they can also be honest with you when they're feeling any which way. So, you know, like I think you know, they're just this concept of like, that, you know, we, I think we all have like worked in restaurants where, or like typically the motto at any place you work is like, you know, if you leave your emotions at the door, like just show up ready to work. And that's great on some levels, obviously, like if you are like in a foul mood, like you don't need to come in and like be rude to guests because you're in a foul mood. Um, but I don't like the idea of like not being able to tell your managers that you're having a hard time. Um, and we're really good at that at Death & Co. Like we're super open on like, check-ins if you have something on your mind or whatever like open dialogue and communication is key so i think as uh, if you're in management or if you own a, a place and you work with your team like being able to show them that you are human as well and um that you also struggle and giving them that transparency and being able to be vulnerable with your team so that they can in turn feel comfortable with being vulnerable with you I think that, um, Alex, that's so important. I I think back to when I was managing and I cringe at some of the behaviors, but it's, you know, it's it's a learning process. And that's what I had learned from the managers that I learned from. But I think you bring up a really good point. It's, it's, it's changing that conversation. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity in this time where we've all had this pause to, to flip the script and, and as we come back, come back to something better and different what that's that's more supportive. So I think that's incredible advice. So thank you for that. LP, did you want to add anything to that? Something that I also think is important is as humans, we're conditioned, right? So we um, we tend to work in a space where positive reinforcement, encourages our behavior uh so if we're if we're constantly encouraging people to work in a life where the grind is like a, a positive thing and that we're not you know respecting boundaries and we're texting people at four in the morning when they're home with their families then you know this this conversation we're having is is useless and worthless so we should be applauding people when they're asking for space and when they are you know really establishing um boundaries and um and all of the above it's it's extremely important so uh as managers and as you know employees and as co-workers we should uh encourage encourage that behavior more awesome all right we have about 10 minutes left and looks like two more questions so how do you say no to friends and family when you finally break free of saying yes to every job? So saying the who? Saying no to friends and family. I'll let y'all run with that one. Well, I think if anything, if friends and family should be the ones who are, are supporting you better, right? <laughs> uh, so I, I personally, um, and we, we, we experienced this, Alex and I, like with having a business and with everything having, you know, uh, gone on the last few months, like we also working together for the first time had to be able to communicate. Communication is key, you know, and, and having those difficult conversations uh, are necessary. And if you don't have them and you kind of let things fall to the side, uh, someone's going to be unhappy. So, um, <clears throat> you know, even putting it away or wording it in a way where it's like, this is what I need or I can't do this, or I'm unable to do this because, 
if 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 they have a difficult time accepting that, um, unfortunately, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with cutting ties, friends or family. That's really my my motto. LP, telling it like it is. Uh, I'm really lucky. Like my, I live. Well, I'm not lucky. I live very far away from my family, so I only get to see my family like one or two times a year. So I, there's not a lot of like no that I have to give them because, like. They, you know, I'd have to fly to see them. Um, but I, you know, and this kind of resonated with me in a different way in that, like, you know, my partner and I don't live together. And so we have, you know, like we, we have certain nights that we stay the night together, but we don't live together. And so, you know, I, I'm such a routine person that I'm like, okay, well, if it's Monday night, like we stay the night together on Monday nights. And then like, sometimes if there's like a, like a wrench in that plan or like we had a really hard weekend and, you know, he's like, I just need a night like of silence alone. Even if I like feel that inside that I also need that, sometimes my brain is like, but it's Monday night. We Monday nights we spend together. And so like for me, that's been like a learning, like something I've had to teach myself is like, you know, just because like you think, you know, just because this is like the schedule that you think it's supposed to be doesn't mean that you can't listen to what your body is telling you or your mind is telling you of like, of needing to say no or just needing to ask like or just asking for what you need and like it's okay to like just have a night to yourself or whatever it may be and like I don't know if that applies necessarily to family as much it may um but I guess from I guess the moral of the story is like just learning to be in, listen to what your body's intuitively telling you and like it's okay to go with what that is even if it's not on the schedule of what you think your schedule is supposed to be. Definitely. Um, kind of coupling on that again. Um, I think we've got about five minutes left, so we'll go for one more question, see how far we get. Um, being entrepreneurs, what strategies are you using to establish boundaries? And do you strive to keep a daily schedule or how do you manage the flow of your business so far? It's funny. We were actually talking about this today a little bit. Uh, so uh, this ideal schedule that everybody wants, we, we strive to have, but that's just not realistic. Um, especially, you know, Alex has another job uh, and I, I have other obligations as well. So we've, we've placed ourselves in a position where there, we can be flexible, right? Um, or, you know, if there's something I can't get to, Alex is on it. If Alex can't do something, I'm on it. And by respecting those boundaries, but also the, just the fact that life is unpredictable, um, there there is a balance created in and of itself, which is really nice. So I'd say three things, be kind to yourself, be realistic, right? And have the plan and then the alternative plan. Um, and then just work cohesively as well. Yeah, in addition to that, um, I'm a big fan of like organizational tools, if and when you can use them. Uh, LP and I try to communicate work stuff on Slack as much as we can. Um, that's something that uh, we do at Death & Co too. So like if you're messaging me on Slack, I know it's about work. And if you're texting me, it probably isn't about work. LP and I are kind of like, it's a little bit more nebulous for us. It's just kind of, you know, still kind of getting in a groove but like for especially for death and co it's like if i'm getting a text message it's either an emergency or it's personal and if i'm getting a slack then it's just a work message um i really like that um i'm big on organizational tools so anything that kind of helps you have a little bit of separation and organization in your life is really big and then other than that i would say yeah like lp and i just have really open dialogue and uh, there's no like shame or stigma between us of being able to ask what you need for. So, um, you know, we normally have our meetings on Mondays and I was like, Hey, I didn't get to work out at all last week. Like and my only opportunity is tomorrow morning. So like, can I, can we reschedule our meetings so that I can exercise? Um, and, you know, being able to just be open with the people that you work with and, and tell them what you need. Like there's no reason to like make up an excuse. Like if you need to work out, just tell your business partners, your partner, your coworkers, like, can we do this another time so that I can take care of myself? Like, there's no shame in that. Um, and like, I'm just fortunate to work with somebody who gets that and is, you know, open to open to making it work. Awesome. Um, you actually reminded me 
I too love an organizational tool. Uh, one in particular that I shared with these amazing ladies that um, we're probably going to, we're going to talk more about around the launch of your modules on the blend. So make sure that you join the blend and follow the modules because if you take them, there's going to be a very, very cool gift that we'll send to you. Um, it is something that I personally purchase for myself every year. Uh, and I think you'll really dig it. So make sure you follow. There's actually one more question. I'm going to try and uh, ask it really quick. And if you all don't mind, I'm just going to throw my two cents in because it is definitely up my alley. Uh, any advice for road warriors and achieving some wellness balance and avoiding burnout? It can be so hard for those of us who usually travel all the time and find normalcy or downtime when on the road. Um, yes, agreed. Um, as someone who has up until March traveled pretty much 80% of the year, um, it is incredibly difficult. And I think a lot of the tools that Elkie and Alex talk about, um, it, it seems really difficult because when you're not in a place that's your house, it's very hard to like wake up and say, okay, I'm going to go work out or I am going to make sure that I eat breakfast and have a cup of coffee before I dive into my emails. But I highly encourage you to set those boundaries. And I will be very honest, I have been bad at setting those boundaries in the past, but they're important and nothing is so important that you can't wake up, eat something, have a cup of coffee and take a deep breath before you dive into work. We have to be better about drawing a line between, and, and that's something that I've talked to both Alex and LP and Jesse about now that everything I do is from my home. So my work is at home and my life is at home. And so trying to turn that off, you know, it's, it's, there's not really, this isn't a nine to five life, but like being able to get up and walk out of one room and go, okay, that was my work room. I'm going to go in here to my life room now. Um, but I think, you know, as we move back into traveling, which I still think is probably a little ways off, um, carrying the lessons that you learned during this time into that, um, and prioritizing them. All of this is about priority. You have to prioritize yourself first. It's the put your own mask on first. You can't pour from an empty cup. Like those things all exist for a reason. So make sure that you are coming before anybody else or anything else. And that's really where that balance comes from. I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that. We have one minute left. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. Just being in tune with what you need and, you know, trying to stick to it as best you can. Thank you both again so much. I'm so excited for your modules to come out next month. Jesse, thank you so much for being here. It is my honor and privilege to work with you every day. And I'm so happy to share this time with the three of you. And thank you so much to everybody who joined. I think there's probably some questions that we missed, but maybe we can email people or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. This is, and, a, this is a connected industry. <laughs> yeah. And, and don't forget, we're still much more to come with Alex and LP on the website later. So we'll definitely make sure all of those questions are included in some way as well. Yeah. So it's the blend world and the blend world. Yep. FOH on Instagram. So we'll see you soon.